My name's Jennifer and I'm 39 years old and tomorrow I'm going for a live donor kidney transplant. Six years ago, Dr. Okachuko over at Crozier diagnosed me with idiopathic membranous nephropathy with glomular nephritis and protein urea. It's definitely a mouthful. What that means is that Jen's immune system was now attacking her kidneys and viewing her kidneys almost as a foreign body. And so in addition to causing her to lose a lot of protein, it was also causing her to lose kidney function over time. And we thought at that time it was the wise and prudent thing to get her on the transplant list as soon as possible. That's when he referred me to Crozier Transplant. That journey with um, Dr. Fink and Dr. Butler started and I've been on the transplant list now for just over a year. And then that's right around the time Aaron and I met for dinner. Hi. <laughs> Happy night before. Thank you. I'm so excited. Me too. I can't wait. T minus 12 hours. 12 hours. Are you nervous? No, I'm excited. I know, me too. I'm excited and I'm excited for you. I can't wait. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. All right, come in. Come in. Thank you. I can't remember exactly when we met. I, I, it was in, I think it was high school. I feel like it was eighth grade summer. We just became very quick friends. I think everybody knew like we were just inseparable. We've done everything together. Snowboarding, skiing, sneaking out, going to school, cutting class to mature in and becoming adults. And she was one of my best friends as teenagers. Life happens and we kind of separated and went our different ways and we caught up after some time apart, but still had remained friends. We decided to go out and have dinner and catch up on each other's lives. And Jen shared with me the decline of her condition and I kind of started it with a joke of, well, it's kidneys, plural, we have two. I'll give you one, we only need one. But it was never a joke. When she told me how her condition had declined, to me it was, it was just, no, no further thought. I will go get tested. So I handed her a card from Dr. Fink's office and I was like, you have to contact them. I was like, because they won't contact you. Like you have to take the initiative. So I gave her the card and I went through the testing. I had, I never had any intention of backing out. The moment those words came out of my mouth, I had a commitment. I mean, this is my friend of over 25 years. I think this is just the human thing to do. From the first test to the last um, was, I think, over six months. So Aaron came in and from day one, very interested, listening to everything like risks, benefits for Jen and really, you know, totally gung-ho. Anytime we hear about someone wanting to be a donor, uh, it's, it's a big, big deal for us and anywhere. And this is one of the greatest, greatest forms of altruism, meaning someone being selfless and really, really just giving something of themselves uh, that they don't need to do. Most people, their living donors can be friends or spouses or brothers and sisters or even like aunts and uncles. Oftentimes we'll have people with the heart to donate, but the kidneys aren't well. So while we would prefer to do this for, for everyone, obviously because the grafts last longer, the outcomes are better, large screening process that we go to to make sure that those people that donate are not gonna become uh, recipients themselves down the line. At about 4.30 today, I was still at work and my phone rings and I just said, excuse me, it's the hospital again. And so I walked out of my office and Dr. Fink says, Hey, how are you feeling? When, uh, wait a minute. Like I, I hear the tone. Like this isn't the the chipper, you know, oh. Dr. Fink. I spoke to twice this morning. And he said, Dr. Fink, what's wrong? And she said, one of your labs did not come back today, and it is a requirement that we get the results. I need you to come in. 
and give me your blood. She said, I need you like right now or we have to cancel the surgery. Off I went, got there. Thank they, God. They were able to find a phlebotomist um, that could do the, um, the draw. And then Dr. Fink found a separate lab outside of Crozier who could do this test. And they were so accommodating. We'll get a courier up to you. And Dr. Fink said, absolutely not. I am personally delivering this. Wow. So when I say that the transplant team wow. is just phenomenal, I mean, Dr. Fink, I, I can't speak highly enough about her. She is so wonderful. And she left tonight after I left and she drove and hand delivered this. And she said, I'll, I'll make sure you know later. It's gonna be fine. I'll see you in the morning. Here we are. Here we are, <laughs> hours away. <laughs> Surreal. <laughs> like, I can't believe it's really happening. I was wide awake all night. I, I barely <laughs> slept. And then we met here at the ER around 6? 6 a.m. 6 a.m.? Yeah, went straight up. We Short got put procedure. into separate rooms. It was oh, like, all right, yeah. see you later. Yeah. All right, later. Yeah, I think we got one more picture before surgery. Yeah, and that was it. So what happens is in the morning, we start, we um, make sure that everything's checked in, make sure that everyone knows where they're gonna be, and, and we do do a run through to make, make sure that everything is seamless. And so what happens in, in the morning is the donation part, which is completely separate in a separate operating room, takes place laparoscopically. Uh, and my partner does that part. And somewhere in the middle of her case, when I think she's just about ready to take the kidney out, then I'll start my portion. Uh, and my portion is basically just getting the recipient, Jennifer in this case, ready, ready for transplantation. Basically so that I minimize the time that it takes for that organ to, to be ischemic, meaning receiving no blood from the donor side to put that into the recipient. It was as smooth as possibly could have been. Um, I think they both went really, really well. Uh, basically by the time Aaron's kidney was out, Jem was ready to receive it in the other room. Next thing I knew, I was waking up <laughs> another in a recovery room. Wow. I definitely have so much more energy. I feel a lot better. I just got to remember, I got to take breaks and relax because my mind's like, go, go, go. And the body's like, slow down. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the first two weeks were rough, but, you know, pain does end. I mean, I, I won't sugarcoat it, but the recovery was definitely brutal, but... Like she's gentle. I mean, pain goes away. It's pain yeah. is temporary. Yeah. You know, this should be forever. <laughs> the other big thing is like if we can share our story and this journey that we've gone through almost yeah. a year and a half in the making from beginning to now. Absolutely. If we could try and inspire just one person to do the same thing. One of my best friends, her brother, is about to start dialysis and desperately needs a kidney. So if there's just one person who would consider getting tested, hopefully we can get somebody to step up. For him, yeah. Yeah. Everything and everybody at Crozier has been absolutely amazing. Everybody in the doctor's office from, whether it would just be the receptionist or social worker or whoever, it's, you know what I mean? It, it's been, a great experience and a complete pleasure to work with all of them. And I'll be here longer to keep visiting. <laughs>